everyone. Welcome to Aussie Tech Ed's episode 653. How are you doing? It is the 17th of October 2019 and we're back again. Uh, not too much around this week so uh, this show might end up being a bit more of a chit chat but uh, Jordan tells me he's got a few uh, talking points so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into those in a sec. But we are brought to you by ATH Web Hosting. Uh, if you've got uh, a web page or you, you might not have a web page, you want it up, uploaded onto the web or you want to create one, give it a shot. Uh, you can go to athwebhosting.com.au. Servers operate on SSD drive, immediate activation, SSL certificates, domain registration and more. If you've got a uh, website somewhere else and it is on a C panel, if you know what that is, or if it is on a C panel and you want to transfer it to athwebhosting.com.au, get on there and uh, well, send me an email, glenn at aussietechheads.com.au, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Now, you want to register your company with ASIC online? Uh, Start New Company is Australia's easiest and fastest online company registration site. All the constitution, company certification and other documents are available for download. ABN and GST registration, tax file number registration is also available. Uh, and Aussie Byte, ATH19 is your 33% off code, a coupon code at Aussie Byte in the Fitbit app gallery. Good work. All right, let's uh, let's get into uh, so say good day to Jordan, and then I'll finish the other stuff off. All right, hey Jordan. Good day, mate. Good day, good mate. Good day. How's it going? Good day, mate. Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, yeah good. Good, good. Uh, what's been going? Like on? I said, I think I said to you earlier, a bit of rain this morning. Yes, yeah, it's always a bit of thunder last night. Was you know crying dogs under the bed. You know. Yes, yeah. They oh. do in the rain. Oh look, I can't even open. You know, like you get your sausages in that like forest, forest stone, forest what what forest stone packaging, and the plastic over the top of it. Uh, you know, and it's like vacuum sealed. And you put your knife in it, it goes pop uh, to open it. Well, the dog gets scared yeah. of that, goes and runs away. Gets an eyes. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, you know, it sizzles. This pan that something sizzles in the pan goes and runs away. It's a bloody big sook. But anyway, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, but we got to love them, don't we? That's why we love them. Oh, that's right. Yeah, look, yeah, she can, uh, she can suck all she likes. She's got a little safe. You know, place. when you and when you lose one, it hurts like losing a bloody family member, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's not very good. Oh, yeah, especially no. the trip if you have to have, 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 have the poor thing put down. Yeah, the trip to the vet is probably one of the hardest trips you ever have to make. And then um, the guilt that comes afterwards. Oh yeah, look, I, I yeah, I don't, even though you think you're doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah, well, I think you know you're doing the right thing, don't you? Like, you know, you know, old, but you just think. feel bad, you know. Like, what? Yeah, I don't know. What right do you have? But you know, it's you know, yeah, you know, it's right, but it's you just feel you feel bad. Well, our last little one, she uh, the day. I reckon before, I sobbed for about three or four days after my last one. Oh yeah, it's no bloody <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I I couldn't even talk about it for weeks. You know, just just can't talk about it. And, uh, yeah, you just have to, uh, you know, the, the bloke brought around the, the ashes, you know, about three or well, maybe not even three days, probably ten days later. And I just went, yeah, good on you, mate. Good on you. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's, you know, it's like losing a family member. It's the most horrible feeling. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we not- love our animals like crazy, don't we? Yeah, the little. And then you see, you know, things on, I've seen videos and stuff on, on Facebook and YouTube and people who have sent me things on Messenger and, of animal cruelty, and I just, I just cannot fathom it. I can't no. even look at it. Oh, I can't no, even look no. at it. Oh, well, hopefully you don't get too much of that stuff. But I, I thankfully I don't really get that sort of stuff on Facebook. I think I'd. Uh, oh, Facebook Messenger is the worst. I reckon you get your mates sending you things, and I think sometimes oh. I get messages, and I think, my gosh, mm. where do they get those videos from? And I think you must have some crazy friends, man, to be forwarding that on to me, like. Well, I wouldn't forward stuff like that. There's certain things. That Who I are don't. your friends to be forwarding yeah, things? Like that? That's right. Yeah, there's certain. You know, you got. I think you got to have standards, and uh, you do. I have standards. I've actually messaged some people back before and gone, "Come on, mate. Yeah, don't send me stuff like that." No. I actually actually had a friend who got barred once from sending me a a, a death video of some sort. I, I don't even I don't even remember watching it. I think I turned it off when I mm. saw what the video was going to be about. But yeah, he got barred and couldn't talk. We couldn't talk for like six weeks or something. He got messaged. Yeah, oh, so. yeah. yeah, there's certain things that, yeah, I just don't engage with. And that's uh, no. like people, I don't know why, but some people just like sending you photos or videos of people dying and this sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's horrible. I don't go in for that. People, sort of some stuff. people like that sort of thing. I, I just don't think, how, how can you like that sort of thing? Like, no, that's right. No, it's no good at all. It's horrible. Yes. It's horrible. Yeah. And animal cruelty is just as bad. 
Yeah, in like, some some respects, it's worse, isn't it? Because like the the animal's defenseless, but uh, but yeah, you know, they're innocent. Yeah, especially if it's innocent. Like a puppy dog. I mean, most of the people, most of the people are innocent. A lot of the people are innocent. Mm, that's right. Did you see the little? There was a little while ago on Facebook. Uh, there was a picture of a an ant's face under a magnifying glass. Oh, did you see? That? Oh, I did see that. Like, and how many? And then after that, I thought about all the ants I've squished under a fingernail over the right. years, thinking, God. All yeah. these ants I've killed have got faces now. Yeah, they've all got it's little faces. Yeah, it's like right. you can't kill it anymore. I know. I don't. I don't well, well, I don't like killing <laughs> spiders even. You know, like I'd, if no, I, I don't either. If I have to. My I'm wife hates to. me for it. I pick them up and take them outside. She hates me for it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if I and then to... the neighbours crack the shits because I always put the huntsmen's in the fence <laughs> and they go over to their place. Oh, well, hunts, huntsmen's are all right, aren't they? They're all yeah, right. they're all right. Yeah, they're all good. They're good. I've got a friend who just walks up and picks them up off the wall and takes them outside. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come up with his hand. But even with cockroaches, you know, you have, just before you go to whack it, you go, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Bang. Yeah, yeah, sorry, mate. Yeah, but it has to be done. Uh, all right. So let's tell you guys. But, you know, speaking of Facebook, <laughs> while you're on the Facebook topic, yeah. have you noticed all the, um, the thumbs up and thumbs down like amounts have gone? Yes, that's right. So, so if you make a comment, someone likes it, it, it doesn't display the number of likes? No. No, that's to appear as <laughs> and, the snowflakes, I think. Well, I think I thought it was because there's a lot of um, people who rule their lives over how many likes they, they get. You know, we get suicides and all sorts of things well, by people. True, what, that, people th- what people think of people, you know. Is that, and they, the yeah. more likes they get, the better they feel kind of thing. Well, true, but is that is that a reason to ban it? Like, it's so pretty. I don't know. It's pretty pathetic, isn't it? Like, you're going to go kill yourself if you don't get enough likes. Like, you've got Well, if, if the person's de- – yeah, well, if the, the person's depressed enough, I suppose, that, you know, those things can happen. And, and that's well, yeah, not – true. That's not a reason to not ban it. I mean, if, if somebody's ill and they can't deal with it, then obviously there's an issue and it's good mm. of Facebook to take that onto account. But well, maybe they should there's also them. pros and – there's pros and cons with everything, you know, like – with the um with the industry I'm in with this with all these bands and everything, you know, I see bands get booked on how many likes they've got, you know. Yeah. Yes. And 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 well, that's a fair call. Uh, yeah, and at the same time, as good as that is, and levels the playing field for for everyone, you know. Hmm. If if there's no you know there's no more likes for, you know that band, so we can't judge on whether we should book them or not. It's kind of does level the playing field, and it's kind of good in its own well, way. Well, yes, you can you can still count but, them up yourself. If you want, you to. can, but no one else can. Like, a, you couldn't no. have a venue. A venue look at the band. The band. Well, they can look at the page, but just a, a, a comment or an invite or a or whatever. Mm. They can't see how many likes they get. Like, if they say they're playing at this venue or whatever. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm a bit in between on it. I don't know whether I like them or I don't. I like them there or I don't like them there. I can't. Look, I think the problem is is that. Uh, you know, like Facebook, although all this stuff's not regulated, so they're doing this off their own back, and it'll be to their own detriment. Like I hear that there's other social media platforms coming out, uh, you know, that are that are a bit more, shall we say, a bit more liberal, a bit more give the give the user a bit more leeway with what they can post and all this sort of stuff. You know, nothing like bad, bad, but you know, just um, different thoughts and all this sort of stuff. And um, but yeah, to, that will be to Facebook's detriment if they're doing this off their own back because like these other platforms will come out. They'll have the number of likes, they'll have the number of love arts or whatever, and it'll take over. Well, I don't know. Well, Instagram did it, didn't they? They right, they yeah. put them on and removed them or something. Well, they've they've removed the links, but that's Facebook as well. <laughs> you know, and I just saw. A, I remember only five minutes ago, so I could be wrong, but vaguely remember seeing an article, something about Trump, saying that you know Facebook is is very addictive and yep. you know, it's very bad, and they should ban it. Should ban it. <laughs> Right. Or ban Facebook and well, some places probably do, you know, like yeah, well, I guess so. But uh, oh, I don't know. But maybe you'd think play, places like China. But look, I don't, I'm not for banning it or anything like that. I just think that they could probably uh, maybe just relax, you know. Like, do you think having do you think having the likes, you know, the thumbs up or thumbs down is is um, what makes it addictive? Maybe uh, no. Well, that, I, I'm not probably addicted to it because i don't really post that much like i'm not one that posts my every move on it like i'll post a few mm. funny little things here and there um yeah but like, oh, there's a lot of nonsense that there's a lot of resharing of stuff that's what annoys me with facebook well that's all i do heaps of, there's, there's heaps of that resharing you know like yeah. people getting on and 
you know, how many times do you see different people post the same thing you've already read because they've just reshared it, you know? Mm. Yeah, well, that's right. And like, I even sat down a little while ago just to, to go through Facebook and just like a few more pages, you know, because it was getting boring. I wasn't seeing enough stuff, you know. I thought, no, oh, you're just seeing junk. You probably need to like the pages so you can yeah. see what's happening with events and things in your area. Yeah, and just, yeah. Like, just like a few more things. Like, you know, I just went out and liked about five or six Doctor Who fan pages, you know, and went out and liked a... Uh, and you don't have to follow them. I often... I get people, I get reminders, you haven't liked this page, you've been asked and you haven't liked it. And I think, oh, mm. maybe I should have just liked it and turned off the follow button so I don't get annoyed. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I think, look, I don't know. Look, I just think that, that not showing the like numbers, I think it's ridiculous. If you've got a problem with that, then you've got other problems and you need to get them sorted rather than just... Yeah, but you can't put that blame back onto the person who's got a problem. Like if they've got a problem and they have to get it sorted, it's... Well, it's, not my you, you, it's I think it's good of Facebook playing, you know, you know, you know playing that. playing it correctly and trying to help help the problem rather than just ignore it. At least they've done something. But I think that there is there's definitely pros and cons for both sides of that. You know what they that. say about problems? A problem shared is a problem two people have got. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's going on. <laughs> All right. But, but you know, in this in this such that the politically correct, you know, world that we live in at the moment, you know, this you know, I mean, this to me it, it is really just another thing to mm. you know, to yeah. to complain about. But you know, like like yeah, like what's next? Are they going to um get rid of the love heart because people get depressed and go and kill themselves because they haven't got a boyfriend or girlfriend or something like that? Something like that, probably. But, you know, don't plant any seeds now, any (laughs) ideas. Someone, but talk about you know, I don't know if you saw the I don't know if you saw the story a a long time ago. Um, it was happening, I think it was in Melbourne, um, and it went all over the news. It went viral on Facebook, and people were gobsmacked as to why people would even come up with it. But they were like, you know, it was, I think, women women were advocating to have the street light, the street light in Melbourne or wherever Mm. it was. The, the, the pedestrian street light, you know, yeah. the go the the stop and go pedestrian lights changed to oh, yeah, yeah. because they weren't stating female, they're just stick figures, but they were to made to look like a man stick figure, and there wasn't a female stick figure with a dress on it. Yeah, that's right, I'm saying. Yes. Did you see that article? Yes, yes, I remember it. Yeah, I remember. Everyone, it. They, so they find a reason to complain, and then I think to myself because they're worried about offending people. But what about? Look, you know, what about honest. what about the women who don't like wearing dresses? You know, like yeah. Look, quite honestly, there's, I think there's a pros and there's pros and there's cons to everything. You know. Well, that's right. Yeah, the amount of people that were offended by and it would be probably minuscule. And they're and they're just people complaining about anything that that they can, and it's kind of a bit silly. There's better things and more important things in, in life to worry about. I think professional complainers, you reckon? Okay. Oh yeah. But while yeah. we're talking about Facebook, you can get us on Facebook. <laughs> we'll bag hey, but I there. might just mention it is a serious thing, though. If people are upset about those like things and there is people who are potentially suicidal or anything, then they should definitely seek help. It should. It's not something that should go um, unnoticed just to put a good spin on that, mm. you know. Yeah, well, that's right. Definitely, you know. definitely seek some advice. Don't let it get the better of you because... At the end of the day, no one really cares on Facebook. You know, right. the likes mean nothing. They click like, and then two seconds later, they're worrying about their next so like. They, their next they don't even remember the thing they liked. No, you know, so people right. out there, if you have a problem, they don't even take any of it to heart. It's and awful. The thing, and the thing I've noticed as well is people that you know start posting things, oh, happy snaps about how much in love they are. They're not. <laughs> it's, they're not. Yeah, it's, life it's is life is not as perfect as sometimes yeah. Facebook makes it out to be. That's so right. just it's the opposite. Enjoy enjoy real life. Don't worry about Facebook. Yeah, uh, that's what I say to those people. And and good luck to you. You know. But we are on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash yes, we are. Aussie Tech Eds. and also YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. and you can get the show notes at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. Uh, and don't forget the paper. Still punching out, still uh, punching out those editions twice a day. You got those little press monkeys working hard. And you can find the paper at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. And you might be able to even subscribe to it on the Twitter. I don't know what happens there. Um, and all right, so anyone was watching the iTunes download, the video of the download, well, we haven't been putting it up for the last couple of weeks, haven't had any emails. So I guess we'll call that one quits. Save me a bit of work. That's good, guys. I think it's all on the uh, YouTube anyway, so you know you might as well uh, uh, get it there. But speaking of, and who and really, who uses iTunes and Apple devices these days anyway? You know, like 
Yeah, no well, one, no one, no one uses it. <laughs> no, nah, well, <laughs> I'm only joking. Well, it's all right. I'm sure yeah. there's plenty of people that'll miss it on iTunes. The only reason I did the two versions was one was a lower, lower sized file because it was a lower resolution, so you know it wasn't so big. So like, you know, like I suppose the one on YouTube may come out to be about 800 meg, something like that. Mm. But the one on the YouTube came out to be about 200. So you know, I was thinking of people's bandwidth. You know, I was. Uh, Thinking of that, thinking of doing them a favour. The YouTube runs less, did you say? Yes, yeah, because because so you're watching on a, on a smaller device. So I thought, well, you're not going to need the higher resolution. Hmm. So uh, okay, but yes. Yeah, so anyway, so I'll, I'll take that out of my show notes. We've done with that. We've uh, killed off the low version of that. So okay, there we go. Uh, now I was going to say something else there. I went through the. Oh, went to the show notes, went through the paper. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say something else, but I've completely gone out of my mind. Um, but I know you're going to Cairns soon, and um, you're gonna, you know, there's going to be some listeners in the audience, I hear. So that'll be nice. Oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah. I'll make sure I um, make sure I get um, a, say hello if anyone approaches me or whatever. Get yeah. a free beer out of them. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, eh? Or yeah. they might be, well, they might, they might be trying to get a free beer out of me, maybe. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so good stuff. So as I go, you walk around the house singing along, do you, practicing and getting ready for uh, it? You know, my kids my kids hate Midnight Oil already. Right. And now they just now they just hate it even more because I'm, I'm ear bashing them with Midnight Oil songs in the car yeah. and good. at home and everywhere else. Good. Um, oh, I must admit, my son likes US Forces. He thinks that's pretty cool. I think he wants to learn the words. Yeah, that's a good one. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't listened. Actually, I might tune him up on Spotify tomorrow. I haven't listened to those guys yeah. for ages. I, I, Actually, you know, it, it sparked me to go out and buy a pair of those $25 earbuds off eBay. They're fantastic. Yeah, oh, do you like them, do you? I was going to show them to you, but the box is empty. Right. <laughs> I don't know where the headphones are. Right. So they work I suppose well. that's what happens. That's why I won't buy... Three hundred dollar, um, you know, Apple earbuds because I'm sure that my daughter would borrow them and leave one on the bus. So they work all right. Something they work great. Right. Twenty five dollars and um, these these um, I don't have them with me. And I think they're out. I, I think they might be in the car actually. Do they make but they come in like a rechargeable. They've got like a little barrel and they're yeah. rechargeable. Nice. But the barrels, the, the little tub that they go in, I think is about three and a half thousand milliamps or something. So it's got. You can charge your headphones up about 40 or 50 times just from that one thing. Right. Um, and so, but you can also – it's also got a USB out on it, so you can charge your phone up. So it's also a, a, an extra battery if you want to. So what would be the difference between those and the Apple ones, say? Like uh, well, functionality? Can I've you- had no problem. The Apple ones, to me, look like toothbrushes. That's that's one difference. Can you they look like electric tooth. Electric toothbrushes? Um, yes, you can. You can talk to Siri or, or um, your Google yeah. Assistant. Yeah. Right. Well, you might have to send me Although mine aren't the touch the touch ones. They've got a button on them. I thought I was buying the touch ones, but you know how these photos on eBay can be very yeah. misleading. You can get one product and receive and another. what's the button do? That? What's the touch button do? Well, you can either forward a song or back a song oh, or okay. volume up, volume down, you know. Right. Um, you can also call Siri or you and or so whatever if one, up. if one falls out, does it go beep in the other one? Is that how Apple works? I think so, yeah. Yeah, you haven't... It tells me when it's paired to the left or the right. I can also use them singularly. Right. So they work as car kit as well, like you can use them hands-free oh. for phone calls and stuff like that. Oh, can you send so me the link to the ones you bought? I'll have a look at those. Like, yeah, so you kind of... Um, you know, you can kind of use them... Like, I think they're great because I've... When it gets busy in the silly season, I spend a lot of time driving around in, in the work truck or the car or whatever, and I'm not always with my... my personal hands-free kit so mm. i think it's great that i can chuck one of those in my ear and if it goes flat i'll chuck the other one in and put the other one back on charge but yeah. they reckon i can get about five i think it's about five or six hours out of the headphones and i think and i think a hell of a lot more out of the battery if you just keep recharging them off yeah, right. oh, for 25 bucks you know it's 25 bucks yeah, that's what i said to my daughter i said why would you want to go and spend 300 bucks on apple headphones mm. that look like you know for starters look like um Too you know much. look like Toothbrushes, yeah. electric toothbrush heads yeah. hanging out of your ears, which they do. But the ones I got were just black and they're just buds. Yeah, but, right, right, nice. But, you know, Pixel, apparently, when they announced – they had an announcement on Tuesday or something this week. Apparently, they just announced some pretty awesome buds. 
yeah. as well that are going to give, they reckon, going to give Apple a good run for their money. Yeah, okay. Um, well, yeah. I haven't looked them up yet, but they've only just announced the ear, Google earbuds of some sort. Yeah, well, I might get a little pair of those little $25. They sound all right. Now, yeah, um, fantastic. Yeah, good. So now, look, I've got a, a fun story, a really fun story, but let's do a, let's do something a bit more serious first because, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of, you know, keep you keep you listening. So Microsoft <laughs> confirms the 19H2 as Windows 10 November 2019 update. So it was originally slated for September, but problems after problems after problems have arisen, and now they're aiming for November. Uh, so it'll be the next Windows Insider build, which is 18363.418, and it'll launch next month. Uh, the problems that they were having, and I, I didn't know this was a Windows update problem. I thought it was a me problem. But I was having, and this was the problem, having issues with the Windows start menu. And, uh, yes, I was having major problems with that to the point where so that there, I've got this white computer behind me. And it's been there for so long because I've had a start menu problem. I can't figure it out. I put new hard drive in it and everything. I'm thinking, what the hell's going on with this thing? Um, What's the problem? Well, for, for that one there, where I'm not sure what the problem, the actual Microsoft. But what, like, what's the actual, the, you know, you have the cause and effect, but what's the effect? What's the actual, what's it doing? So we understand what the start menu is doing. Well, on this one behind What's the me, problem? I don't know if it was the. Uh, Does it disappear or something? No, it would sort of it wouldn't uh, expand fully. So you'd have some some of the menu okay. was stuck under the task bar. But let's look. I've just oh uh, yeah, no, it was pretty silly. But look, I've got a um. Let's have a look here. I've got <coughs> saw this. Now we've got Microsoft is investigating a second issue. That's uh, following following put it the search subsystem. Um, it's not a what do we call it? the start menu? Let's see if I can search for. Start menu on this. We get straight to it. Start. Where are we? Start. Following the installation of the KB4515384, users have reported that both the search subsystem and the start menu itself are failing to operate correctly, displaying frequent errors, including a helpful warning that your start menu isn't working. Well, I never got that. <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, so they've got problems. So hopefully they've, they've obviously fixed that for the release. Uh, the Windows 10 update, oh, yeah, so the Windows 10 May update had its own issues, which blocked installation to get altogether on devices with removable stat- uh, attached storage. Uh, it was considerably smoother than the October 2018 update, uh, which was quickly pulled, if you can remember, because of the file deleting bug, where people upgraded and lost all their files. Yeah, I remember that one. No good at all. So does this <laughs> does this update include the um, the new Chromium Microsoft Edge that's built on Chromium, so it's uh, the same core as Chrome, or is that is that come out already? It doesn't. Because I know that they released a brand new version of Microsoft Edge that, or well, they're about to release one, a brand new version of Microsoft Edge built from the ground up with the Chromium core, which is the same core as Google Chrome. Well, there's this this story here uh, be one of the first to try the next version of Microsoft Edge based on Chromium. Installing a preview won't change the Microsoft Edge you're using today. Uh, so you can download the Edge preview build. Oh, okay. So it's not set. They're not haven't released it yet. Ah, uh, well, this was written in in April, so it doesn't. Really I think it. I think it may have already come. I think it may have I already have been included, thought, yeah, thought, or it might be this update we're about to get. Uh, so Microsoft Edge preview builds are ready for you to try. Check out what they've been working on. Back in December, we announced it. Uh, oh, yeah. Intention. It was there on that one you were just reading. Intention to something Chromium. Open source. Now we're ready to Back in it. December, we announced our intention to build blah, blah, blah on Chromium. So it must be coming in this update, is it? Yeah, back in, yeah, so that one says, back in December, we announced our intention to adopt the Chromium open source project. So the beta was released, looks like around about April and doesn't really say when it's going to happen, does it? It must be this update, this big one that's coming. It could, it could be. To learn more about it, to see our ed- Edge explainers, we announced, that, so you can download. Well, it's still a current page, so it's obviously still in beta. So this is a yeah, it must one. be. I can't wait for it because I think it might. It, I reckon it's got a good chance of putting Microsoft's browser back on, mm. 
back on back on the top of the top of the you know the, the charts because a lot of people like Microsoft, but they still some people still complain and they all still go to Google Chrome. But mm. I think Google Chrome's getting a bit slow too. Sometimes I, I get a bit annoyed with Google Chrome. I must admit, every yeah. now and then. Yeah, look, sometimes I use, but I do use both browsers. So yeah, I use the whole, I use the whole lot except uh, IE now. I use uh, I you don't you don't use Edge. Yeah, the whole yeah Edge Chrome. Firefox. And well, I, think IE, I don't. I don't even know why they've still got IE inbuilt in into Windows. Like, oh, if they're I, trying to get ten going, why have they still got IE? Even look, if something doesn't render properly, I still go to IE. But, but geez, but I think like you, when you look at it, like IE is pretty ingrained into the operating system, isn't it? Like, because you know, if you want to uh, reset, you know, the the user profile, the internet browser profile, or or um you know, the, the histories or caches or whatever, even for Chrome, like you still go into the IE settings and you can still, when you, you fix all the IE settings up and then you can find that the Chrome it, it relies on some of those settings. So that's probably why it's getting hard to get rid of. Probably mm. relies on it. But uh, but look, I'll, I'll do me fun one because this will give us something to talk about for a little while. My fun story is the Internet Archive adds 2,500 MS-DOS games. How good's that? So, Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> I know. So I was having a look through them before. Look, I just get is that why you were late to the show tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no, no I'll, I'll be playing one of these tomorrow. So look, I'll just download the page so we can have a look at it for those that you're on the video. And, uh, a bit slow, the old archive. Must be people hammering the MS-DOS games. Here we go. Look at this thing. So you can just search for what you want. The ones that come wow. up. Wow. Yeah, the ones that come up straight away. Looks like this is reversed. Reverse uh, alphabetical, but Zookeeper, Zeppelin, Giants of the Sky, Yogi Bear, Visit the National Park. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All playable right there on the spot as well, aren't they? Yeah, because, look, I, I thought, look, I remember playing, you know, uh, Wolfenstein on the Apple II. Well, that was probably a bit of a DOS game. So I went and searched for it, and there we go. Look at that. <laughs> there it is. So you can play it right there and then. So let's have a go. So Fantastic. Got, push that game file list. It's like... Yep, I've pushed the button, and is it? Where's it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Click for sound on. Launch, oh, it says yeah, launching emulator. Oh yeah, it looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Press enter. Away it goes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, even the same sound. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, that's cool. I love it. So what's that? Archive.org. <laughs> Oh, he's going to shoot me. I haven't got the right pass. Oh, I've got the right pass. <laughs> I love it. This is, oh, it's so uh, so bad graphics, but, uh, you know. Oh, uh, it's it's reminiscing. That's yeah, what it is. Isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Oh, Absolutely. Here we go. It just brings back a lot of fond memories of just sitting there for hours wasting your time on such nonsense. Yeah, it's, it is good. Uh, but yeah, so what what question did you ask me? Hang on, I'll, I'll have to stop this. I said, what is it? It's, it's archive.org, isn't it? Yes, yes. But is the address. Shit, uh, links in the show notes. Uh, so we've got, oh, yeah. So, so what's this? We've got DOS games. Can we put them in years? Okay, let's go to 1980. Let's see what part of my filter. <laughs> let's see what sort of uh, crappy game there was in 1980. Oh, Dodgeball, Kings Valley 2. Well, let's have a look at. Let's have a look at Dodgeball. Is this really 1980? Let's have a look at dodgeball. This looks like a, just a complete uh, text, <laughs> complete text game. You know, t- to think that you can play them in a browser in this day and age, and then back in those days, you know, you'd have to have the biggest computer you could find, with all the guts and glory to be able to even load it up and play it. Yeah, crazy. But see, this is what happens when there's no stories to talk about in the week. I, I, I started going further and further afield, <laughs> and this is what I find. I love it. I love it. So, um, yeah, it first launched. Jeez, they had to be big computer. I just can't get over how big the computers had to be to just to, just to make that happen. Well, the Apple II that I used to play the Wolfenstein on, I remember. I think it was a sixteen K memory, and it had the tape deck. If you were lucky yep. enough, you had the the disc drive, the floppy five and a quarter. Um, but yeah, no, it was. Uh, yeah. I remember the tape deck. It used to take ages to load them up. Mm. That's right. So the, the archive.org first launched its historical software archive back in October 2013 with a, with a JavaScript emulation engine 
dubbed JS Mess, allowing each file to be executed directly in the browser. Since then, the archive has only expanded. In 2014, it added arcade games, and in 2016, added defanged malware samples. So I think we've, uh, I think we, I remember speaking about these, and uh, Amiga software. I saw an Amiga on Gumtree, I think, today, uh, like for 500 bucks, and I said, I thought to myself, that's probably more expensive than what it was when it first came out. Um, yeah. And uh, in 2018, archive.org uh, threw up there some handheld LCD games and Commodore 64 titles. So the probably the LCD games are probably those ones like uh, Popeye and all that sort of stuff. Hang on. There's a link there. Let me see if we can get the link to those LCD games. This is cool. I wish I had time to play all these. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, it's a, a link to a story. Yeah, right. I'll link to that story. Okay. All right. Uh, so, anyway, I won't worry about that. It didn't take me anywhere. Yeah, so the organisation, archive.org, said MS-DOS Collection was, has received a major boost this week with the announcement of the 2,500 titles, all of which are playable directly in the browser. Uh, they say, since our initial announcement in 2015, we've added occasional new games here and there to the collection. Uh, but this will be our biggest update yet, ranging from tiny recent independent production to long-forgotten big-name releases from decades ago. So if you have a trip down memory lane and jump into the uh, archive.org MS-DOS section. You'll have uh, to email them and, and ask them if you can be their tester. Yeah, well, I want Every to... time they upload a new game, can you test and make sure it works before they make it public? If you like the... Uh, You'd love MS that. Yeah, if you like the MS-DOS <laughs> games, um, why don't send me an email and tell me which one's your favourite. Let me have a look at it. <laughs> yeah, good. absolutely. And then you can bring it up next show and we'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll so, yeah. Play, play them online for, for real. Send me an email, glenn at aussietagets.com.au. I'd love to hear them and see, because there's two and a half thousand. I don't know them all, <laughs> surprisingly. Not. <laughs> okay, so let me know. <laughs> there's probably like, what was another one? Zelda? Is there was a Zelda? You know, it was texted. Oh, there was. What if there's texted? And so many variations as well of even the same games. Yeah. You know, like yeah. all written, you know, the same game with a different name, pretty oh. much. Oh, I just thought of. Oh, look, I just thought one more. I just check one more, then we'll get some stories from you, Jordan. Uh, and then because I just thought uh, I haven't haven't really played Sammy Lightfoot for a while. I wonder if that's up there. Although it was an Apple Apple game. Let me have a look. Let's get back on here. We'll go Sammy. So remember, I used to love it, Lightfoot. Be cool if it was there, wouldn't it? Come on, oh, he's not there. Well, that's that, what about Load Runner, the original. Load Runner. Oh, what is this useless MS DOS archive? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the favourite games up there, it's useless. That's right. Well, look, look. Admittedly, I, these are they were Apple II games, so okay. We'll, we'll, yep. we'll let it uh, we'll let it rest. Okay, um, what's been going on down your way? What have you found for us? Oh no, look, there's Load Run. Found him. Woo! Woo. <laughs> they are. I'll be playing. I know what you're doing after the show. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. So sorry. What what have you found for us this week? Oh, not really. Like you said, it's it's very thin on. Oh, extremely. Us this week, although there has been the Pixel event, and and I've only just kind of discovering that as I'm reading the news. There's probably a lot more we could do and talk about Pixel, but um, there was one article that intrigued me, and that was that the phone-based VR, that as in virtual reality, is officially over. Mobile virtual reality headsets helped millions of people try out VR, but as of yesterday, they're all but officially a thing of the past. Oculus CTO John Carmack, or Carmack, whatever his name is, offered a eulogy last month for the phone-powered Gear VR mobile headset, saying that the headset's days were numbered. And Google just revealed it's discontinuing uh, the similar Daydream View mobile headset in addition to omitting Daydream support for the Pixel, the new Pixel 4 phone. So what's, um, what's the, app, the app will still work on all phones, but Google has now given up on the platform. It once portrayed as an integral part of Android. So what are they saying? You can't buy the glasses that you slip the phone in anymore. That's what they're getting rid of. I know you can buy the old ones and stuff, but they're just not going to. They're not going to continue um, making them with the phones. I suppose you might still be able to get them for PlayStation and things like that, but mm. you know the ones that you put your phone in. I just think they're giving up. You know, yeah, right. So that little, little car. I'd really box. like to, to be honest, but I'd like to see augmented reality. A, you know, yeah. AR, not VR. Yes, yes. 
Yeah, so I remember I got one of those little five dollar boxes that you put your phone in. Yeah, I oh, mate, I was in at Cashies the other day trying to kill some time, <laughs> cash converters, and, What'd you find and I reckon there? I, I reckon I saw about twenty of those those VR yeah, right. headsets, the Google ones, and that for like seven dollars and ten dollars yeah. and eight dollars yeah. each. You know, yeah, like, right. and then you go to places like Kmart was selling brand new ones for ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't you know, know they, and they were very good. I tried one. I didn't think much of it. No, I, tr- I tried the Google, what the cardboard one, and I think they had a roller coaster on it. But it was all a graphical, lowish, resish, you know, graphical roller coaster. I, I think, think definitely better. augmented. Mm. Oh yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, augmented is. I mean, imagine being able to bring up a heads-up display in your own in your own view. Yeah, oh, yeah, would that be? Yeah. I don't you know, know why. you're driving down the you, you're driving down the road, and and you know if they can get it as good just in your glasses, but even so, mm. driving down the road or you're going for a walk, and it, you know these little things just popping up in your screen. I'd like to know. I'd yeah. like to have had a go at one of those Google glasses to see how effective they were. Like you know, where, where it would just come up in the top of your eye, and if you looked at it, you could see it quite clearly. Well, that would be kind of augmented, wouldn't it? I, I guess so in a way, but I would have liked to have had a go. I don't know why they discontinued. The Microsoft augmented reality stuff was supposed to be pretty good, but it's just not quite there yet, is it? No, no I don't think so. But I think they're they're moving along with it. I think I, I heard yeah. Microsoft is still you know doing things like it's still oh yeah still on top of the agenda. I've been really surprised with Microsoft's innovation. You know, mm. lately you- they're really they're really coming to the party, especially with you know their new their new devices we talked about last week. You know, yeah. like yeah, that's right. Uh, MBN has uh, MBN Co claims it will take Australia to 13th in the world for broadband. So good on them. So we're present. <laughs> we're presently ranked 22nd out of 37, which is not very good. The MBN came, claims Australia could rate as high as 13th in the world uh, ahead of New Zealand and the UK. Uh, however, uh, the faster we go, the faster the others go. So we'll probably just be the same. Uh, look. I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this 5G. Uh, is that going to be the be-all and end-all? That's pretty fast, isn't it? Uh, I read a story. Telsh was having a cry. They're saying, oh, we could have given everyone 100 meg. And I'm just sitting there reading, going, why didn't you? You know, and just, it's, you know, so I don't care what Telstra says. I don't care at all. It's just Telstra oh. trying to make a buck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, right. the, the less bandwidth they give you, the more you have to pay oh, for, the more money they yeah. make. Well, I just think that they're just bleeding profusely customers. Uh, I had a survey. Oh, I think I've had about two surveys since I ditched them. And, um, yeah, geez, I give it to them, eh? I just, what don't you like about it? I don't like ringing up foreign call centres. I don't like talking to people that repeat everything I say 500 times. I don't like a simple call taken half an hour. Uh, you know, don't like your prices. <laughs> the list can go on, can't it? Mm. So they're just, yeah, no good. No good. Uh, and uh, look, my last one before we can, uh, round out with some chit chat from. I, I, I heard a, heard a um, <coughs> excuse me. I heard a I saw a video for probably about the hundredth hundred time, you know, pop up on Facebook the other day. You remember, you know that comedian, the Australian comedian Carl Barron. Oh yeah, he's good, funny as. Oh, he's a cracker, and he's always got something funny to say. And I had his Telstra video one come up on Facebook the other day, and I watched it again for yeah. a laugh. You know, <laughs> well, he says, you know, it. he says, imagine if Telstra changed their name. Because every time you talk to someone about Telstra, they always say F and Telstra. And he said, Telstra should just change their name to F and Telstra. And then he said, imagine ringing up for your tech support. And you'd be like, hello, F and Telstra. (laughs) I can't say the full F and word, but you can imagine in your own mind what they're saying. But good afternoon, F and Telstra. (laughs) I'm thinking, this is just... Any other just thing? gold. It is so true. I'll have to have a I'll search for that. It's, but it's like the Harvey Norman, you know. The, the Harvey Norman ads come out and everyone started going, oh, hardly normal. And, but they thought... Hardly well, normal. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's what they, they do in their own ads now. They, they refer to themselves. They go, oh, it's hardly normal. You know, and they, they use... Oh, they've, they've embraced it they, just to try and get over it. They, yeah, they, they, they own <laughs> Put a good spin on it. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> good. But look, here's but the F and Chelsea thing—he gets me, Carl Barron, every time I, I see a video of his pop up on YouTube, one of his jokes, and I just think he's very, the guy's a legend. Yeah, he's very good at that observational comedy, isn't he? He's just extremely good, very good. I love yeah, Carl good. Barron. He's funny. <coughs> um, yeah, look, here's he's one. Good. Here's one for the ages. <laughs> a Russian man is suing Apple, right? Now, this is what happens when I go digging into places I don't normally go digging in. A Russian man is suing Apple for allegedly turning him gay. 
The man is seeking- I did see that article <laughs> and I kind of laughed it off and not today. I think it was last week or something. Oh, I just like, huh? Yeah. I thought maybe it was just a stupid ad or something. I think I moved on. But, yeah, keep reading. I'm interested. You've got me intrigued. <laughs> well, there. I don't think that's in there, but anyway, there's a picture of Moscow. So I'd anyway. like the uh, I'd like the opinion of that story. Let's go. Uh, the man is seeking one million rubles, which <clears> is twenty three thousand Australian dollars in damages from Apple for sending him a cryptocurrency coin or cryptocurrency known as Gay Coin instead of the Bitcoin he had ordered. The complaint said, whoever his name is, Razumilov, downloaded a cryptocurrency app from Apple. But uh, from the Apple Store, but received a transfer of sixty nine gay coins instead of bitcoins he ordered. So <laughs> there you go, and he's he's gone crazy. I thought, in truth, how can I judge something without trying? I decided to try same sex relationships. Uh, he wrote. I decided to try single sex relations. Two months later, I can say that I have got stuck in intimate relations with a representative of my sex, and I can't manage to get back. So he's suing for damages for moral harm and mental suffering. <laughs> so there you go. That's what's happened. What Didn't happened. you know that that's how we make money these days, by suing each other for anything and everything? Yeah, I just thought only, well, it's just going to say only in America, but it's not. It's only in Russia. But, um, like, that's everywhere. Oh, suing for that? Like, are they serious? But anyway, that was just something bizarre I thought I'd bring up and let you know. I'm sure that the app on the App Store is not even Apple's. No, I think it was in. I think it was a in their app in their app store, but not made by Apple. It would oh, be a no. different developer. No, that's no. right. I wouldn't. So I'm sure Apple's probably got some sort of clause that yeah. you know stops them getting in trouble for those sorts of things. But, but like, if you just if you pick it apart and try and take it a bit further, like how, how can anyone? How can Apple uh, be responsible for what you do? Like so, like what say you download a first person shooter. Does it, is Apple responsible if you go out and start shooting people? Like, uh, or um, you know, Even if they didn't create the game? That's right. Like, you know, if you download a game that, uh, you know, I don't know, you, you roll big balls around a maze, and is Apple responsible if you roll a big ball around a maze and it rolls over you and you die? Are they responsible? It's just ridiculous. The whole thing's ridiculous. But that's the world we live in, isn't it? A ridiculous It world. is. Everything's, everything's all over the shop now. Ridiculous. Um, give us a couple of your talking points, uh, Jordan. What oh, okay. Well, um, I don't know whether you noticed. Well, this is just something I'm just going to make these up pretty much. But did you notice with the latest Windows update that it's automatically changing the theme from dark to light? No, I haven't. But then again... I've come across so many computers have been changed. But their personalised the settings, and they're like, I can't see the screen now because it's all everything's dark and with white text, or everything's you know white with black text, or whatever. And mm. there's a there's a new part in the personalised section of since the, since the latest update. There's now light and dark, right? But it's it's updating and changing you automatically over to light or dark or whatever it is. Right? Is that you haven't had that happen yet? No. Turn on light mode system wide. Automatically adjust color. No, well, I've, so upload, upload, I've upload. had it happen heaps of times. They've put this update in and they're just changing everyone's. And it almost, to me, makes it look like they're putting it back to classic view. You know, when you take off all the arrows and and transparencies and things and you go back to the old style classic view, that kind of, to me, I look at it, the light, the light one or whatever it is, and I go, Look, I wonder if that's it. Yeah, Microsoft's Microsoft sent out this light theme and they're turning everybody's computers into classic ones. It's yeah. weird. Well, they might run faster in the classic theme. Get rid of all the... But, well, it's not a classic theme. I'm just saying it looks like that. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> when you flick it over to light, it's almost like it loses that, that, that warmth feel of with all the aero and the transparency and all that stuff. Oh, that, aero. Who needs aero? <laughs> Well, it's not Aero, whatever they call it in Windows 10. It's still transparent in Windows 10. You can still open yeah. up the start menu and see through it. Bloody Aero, that takes me back to Vista. Oh, well, Aero was there in 7. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think it was still called Aero in 10, wasn't it? Don't know. Don't know. I know it was in 7 because I remember, you know, you used to get that warning. You've got me up. thinking about it now. Do I have to look up on my computer and see if there's a classic theme? I wouldn't even know how to do that anymore. Classic theme. Yeah. Uh, 
and you yes. change it to classic to look like the old Windows oh, Seven yeah. and XP and classic and that. You can change. Uh, you can change it so it looks like like uh, Windows two thousand. You know, like that in Windows ten. Yeah, you should be able to because that's what you do when you have speed issues. So that'd be under. Usually, uh, that's if you've got a small video card or something. That yeah. Yes, I don't know where that would. I don't think you can do it from. But I can see the. I can see the light. They've got the light Windows light thing. Yeah. That's there. Is it under colours or something? Yeah, under colours. You've got custom. You can choose light or dark. I was going to have a look and see if I've got. Where's the? And you can also go to themes. I thought you could go to themes and flick over to classic or something. Hang on. I'm going to see if I can get the. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, device manager advanced system settings. Yeah, hang on. I've got Windows going everywhere now. There we go. I think it's in the performance. So you go in the settings. This is if you want it to look really rubbish. You just uh, old school. Yeah, adjust for best performance. And air, see all those ticks on tick down there? <laughs> and then it'll look like Windows 2000 or Windows NT. So go for gold. But that light theme, I think uh, it's probably in display. System yeah, it changes like all the settings, windows and everything. If you put it on dark, it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't hurt. You can flick it over now if you want the dark and then just flick it back again. It doesn't do anything. It just makes like all those settings screens and everything go dark. So you yeah, end up right. having with like you have like light, light blue and black text and stuff in, Ooh, in all your settings window. There we go. Yeah. There we go. It doesn't look too but bad it was, actually. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but I just thought it was interesting that Windows 10 – sent out the update and automatically changed people's personalizations yeah. without asking. Yeah. And I had people going, there's something wrong with my computer, all the stuff's gone dark and I can't read it. And I'm like, good on you, Microsoft. You changed their theme on them without even asking them. Yeah. And you can't, you can't charge to fix that either, so it just cost you. <laughs> Got on your yeah, microphone. look, it's a two-second thing to fix it, but there's a lot of people out there that think they don't know. They just think something's wrong. Yeah, you know. that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't be changing that. You, you shouldn't be sending out themes and changing people's colours of their text and things like that without, no, you know, no, that's without right. warning. Um, anything, anything else down there on in the cold Victoria land? Oh, only that there was. I had a kind of a little bit of a kind of a recappy thing. I tried to find a recap on the Pixel Four event just so I knew that we had something. It just said. Um, and I'm not going to read the whole article because we haven't got time, but it said Google just wrapped up its uh, – Google – where am I? Sorry. Google just wrapped up its Made by Google 19 event right. where we got our first look at the Pixel 4, the Pixel Book Go, and the new Pixel Buds and more. Um, yeah, I'll move this over here How so I can see to read it. Microsoft As months leaks – as months of leaks suggest, Google's new flagship phone has a refreshed design with a sweet orange option, dual cameras and tons of AI features and lots of neat gestures, controls uh, via motion sensor or something. The Pixel Book Go, Go improves on Google's previous Chromebook with lighter weight, cuter design and cheaper price, while the Pixel Buds look like a serious contender to the AirPods throne. We also got... Um, we also got a look at new Nest devices and a cheaper dive into what's going on. Sorry, a deeper dive into what's going on with Google Assistant. Um, and it says, here's everything you've missed in the from the show. And I don't want to go through the whole thing, but it just says the highlights were the, the Pixel 4 makes a smarter smartphone right. and, more, and more clever. The Pixel 4 XL, Google's big screen phone, gets smarter. Um, the Google Pixel Book... Um, Go unveiled uh, the Google Pixel Buds take on AirPods. Nice. Uh, Google unveils Nest Mini with better sound and machine learning, and Google's Nest Wi Fi router doubles as a Google Home. Hmm. So, I, I'm still in love with those Microsoft ones from last week. The which ones? The buds? No, no. The, oh, the, no, the devices. Yeah. Isn't that, they were funny looking buds, though, but I'd like to see those Microsoft earbuds in person. Because I think that pictures can be very deceiving. They're probably either bigger than what they look like in the pictures or they're smaller than what they look like yeah. in the pictures. All right. Well, that's our cue to get Then out. while you've got your screen up there mm. uh, for everyone to see, type in uh, Google or something, the Google earbuds. Let's see what they look like. Google. 
the new Google Buds, yeah, Pixel awesome. Buds, sorry, Pixel Buds, they're called. I haven't even seen a picture of what they look like. Hey, Google Pixel Buds, 170 bucks. Did you bring them up? Yeah. What, on Catch of the Day? Surely, they've only just announced them. Google Pixel Buds? Pixel Buds, oh, Pixel Buds 2, sorry. Oh, so I didn't even know Pixel Buds existed. Well, there you go. I didn't even know Pixel Buds existed. That's how bad I am. Oh, $218, $212. Is that what they look like there, huh? Oh, yeah. That's like the Microsoft ones, isn't it? Didn't they look something funky like that? No, they had big, like, almost like 10 or 20 cent pieces with touch touchscreen things on them. Where did you get your... Uh your ones from eBay? Just eBay, and they, I think they were TW. What did they call them? Uh, they still call them eBuds. I think mine were TWS buds. Do they still call the box them says, the box the box says G uh, GS the G six S T W S is what the box says, but there's a lot of very that, that's them there. They kind of like look like the ones you're looking at right there on your screen, but mine didn't have the Touch bit on them, right? Oh, they're all for twenty five bucks. You get the battery readout and everything. But if you look, look if you, yeah, that's right. But if you do your research, you'll find some of them have got more milliamps in the in the holder. Right. So you'll get like it'll say you can get up to forty eight charges, or you can get fifty charges, or whatever, or you can charge your whole phone three times or something. Because that case that they sit in is actually a an external battery. No, this is a 200 milliamp. So uh, are the Apple and the Google ones, Is uh, what technology is it? Is it Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? So these are Bluetooth. They'll all be Bluetooth, right. I reckon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. But the ones I had said that I can charge them up to 48 times, and I think they were 3,500 milliamps yeah, of, right. of milli- milliamp hour battery that you could keep charging from. So that, on that screen right there that you're looking at, I keep losing it because I keep talking and I have to pin your video to see it. But on that screen right there, I think you've got 150 or something. Which one? 100. I don't know. What's that? I, I've got a kind of a bit blurry, but yeah. you just got to do your, do your yeah. research. But they're cheap enough and they're all the same. TWS ones. <clears throat> Yeah, so if you are. you could type in T, T type in T um, G S six G six S sorry G six S dash T W X try that because that's T W S because that's what my box says. Mine are. Okay. Well, there you Wireless go. That's the same. Things? I think they waterproof and everything. Oh, this thing. Uh, touch control, three D stereo. Headphones, touch control. Yeah, there you go. There's 35 milli, 3,500 milliamps. G, G, G6S, that's what I've got. That's the ones I managed to think. Which, where's the third? Yeah, right. Okay. The third one down yeah. says 35. Yeah, no, I think that's yeah. nice. They're similar to they're mine. Right, don't they? Yeah, I think they're all the same. They're just different lights, like different pictures, but they're all the same, those three, both all of those, I think. Yeah, they're the ones I thought I was getting with the flat touch. Thing right. with no button on the top, they look really slick. Cause you, oh, geez, look at all the. Okay, oh, geez, there's yeah. heaps of them. Oh, there's tons of them, and you can even get the ones that look like apples. You know, with the toothbrushes, T, they're still TWSs. Right. T, I think they're T12s and T20s and T17s and T18s and all those. But they just work for uh, anything. Oh yeah, Universal, Apple, Samsung. Yeah. yeah right. Oh, okay. Cool. They're all I'm hands gonna, free. Buy something. I'm gonna buy one. Lovely. All right. Yeah, buy them. I'll do that after the show. Those ones looks all right. I want the push button. The push button sounds good. Just read your um. Just just read the specs on them, so you know you get you know you're getting something that's got, you know, good sound range and 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 good battery. Yeah. That's all you got to really really hope for is good battery. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, on that note, I'm eager to go get them. So let's uh let me get out. Of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. Gonna go and pick up some pick play Dad's taxi for the next right. hour. Oh, I love it. Love it. All right. Good do. stuff. So uh, yeah. Cool. That's the end of the show. Uh, get into those MS DOS games and get into the Bluetooth earbud game. They're they, just they cheap, right, mate. They? they are cheap. They are. My 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 daughter's like, I don't want them. I want Apple ones. Everyone at school has Apple ones. Ah, oh, just spray paint them white. Never. No one will know. It's got to be Apple. 
No. You've got to be Apple. I said, no, no one will know. And I said, I can guarantee you most of the parents have bought the cheap knockoffs yeah. for the kids. Yeah. And the kids are probably running around school telling everyone they've got Apple. I don't my, my Because the parents aren't going to spend 300 bucks on a pair of earbuds and then lose one. Well, t- the right? place where I buy my toners from, that they, they've given away these earbuds, earbuds yeah. whatever they are. With every Apparently, year. Sports Girl, you can buy the, the knockoff ones for about 40 bucks. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm into it. And Kmart even sell knockoff ones as well for 40 bucks. And why would you even buy corded Apple ones for 40 bucks? Well, you can have these for, earbuds. Yeah. For 300 bucks. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, let's uh, get out of here. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming in, Jordan. We'll see you maybe next week. It might be Will and uh, Jason's turn. I don't know. See what they're up to. But anyway, we'll figure that out next week. All right, so. Yeah, um, let me know. Until then, thanks for coming in, and uh, good luck with the week. Good luck, everyone. Uh, wish you well. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. See ya. See ya.